Hi everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for More It's Leo speaking. Today we are going to go deeper into the explanation of some of the modules inside Terra Pro. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, let's click up here where it says uh, the name of the preset. Let's go up uh, the hierarchy and let's choose the user bank. And let's click on the plus sign to create a new preset. And let's call it SFM, but you can call it whatever you like. This is the default preset as we just created. Now, as I showed you in the previous tutorial, click where it says filter one here. I'm under the amp module and select just oscillator one. As you can see, it has collapsed or removed all the other uh, modules, which is really nice. That is the beauty of how this interface works. You can minimize or change very quickly the connection. Now, as I explained in the previous tutorial, you have dials to change up and down like this vintage uh, modeling um, synthesis dial. Then you have um, um, buttons which you, you can turn on and off or select, uh, in this case, a voice mode from monophonic to polyphonic, okay? Then you have underneath, uh, you have uh, a modulation uh, um, amount. And then below that, you have this button where you click where you can set the modulation source. Okay, so let's focus on these first three modules. The first one is common. So if you click on common, it will expand also additional parameters, okay? For that module, the same for oscillator one and the same for the amp one, okay? And if you click on the name again, names again, it will, of course, uh, collapse uh, the additional parameters. But let's open again the common module. So starting from the top, you have the selection from monophonic, only one note at a time. Let's decrease a little bit the volume. Or you can have it also polyphonic as well. Nice to have it polyphonic. Next, we have uh, a phase. You can have it in sync or not. When it is not in sync, um, of course, uh, each note will uh, be able to run freely. When it is in sync, in sync instead of activated, they will be all uh, starting from the beginning of that phase, which is very useful, for example, for drum sounds. Next, you have a button which says fingered. Okay, so to explain that, below you have a portamento, so which uh, can go from uh, uh, zero to actually uh, 75.8 seconds, which is quite interesting, okay? And that is the time that it takes to slide from one, smoothly, of course, from one note to the other. Okay, and... Um, and that is in millisecond, of course, but you can extend that. And if you activate fingered, the portamento will work only if you have legato style play notes, okay? And that is the beauty of it. So let's go to monophonic. So you can hear that, that is really nice. So let's go back to polyphonic now and let's deactivate the portamento, or double click on it. Next you have a unison or multiplication of voices. So you can go from one to eight. And then you can randomly spread uh, um, the tuning between them. Okay, so let's set this down to zero and let's go back to one voice. You have a, a vintage dial and um, you can hear the difference, in particular if you have a headphone on. Nice. You have pitch, which you can change up and down, plus 48 semitone or minus 48. Double click, and then of course you have an adjustment on the, in terms of scent for your pitch as well. And of course underneath you have uh, um, for the pitch 
two, so two modulation, two sources of modulation down here, and the two corresponding amounts. So let's say we go to LFO number one, okay, and we increase the uh, amount. <laughs> Let's click and hold down here to reveal the parameters. Let's change the rate. Let's click on LFO1 again to close those parameters. And I'll show you that you can use the second modulation here. I just go to LFO, choose LFO2, okay? And you can, yeah, you have two sources of modulations, okay? Double click, double click to remove that. Here you have a MIDI band, okay? So it can go up to 48 halves. Oops. And that, of course, is to do your pitch band if you receive the right messages. And then here you have a dial to influence the envelope times, okay? Which works um, very nicely. Let me show you how you can increase straight away the release. Okay, is is extending the times for the envelope, and of course you can have underneath a source of modulation and the modulation amount as well. Okay, so let's uh, move on to the next one. This is the oscillator. Okay, and I'm going to cover this one in the next tutorial because I want to cover the oscillator one and two and three all at the same time, and because they are slightly different, and I'm going to show you also a little bit of. Uh, a frequency modulation synthesis as well. So I will come back to these. We, we have the amp module. Now, here you have uh, input, okay? In this case, it's taking the input from oscillator number one. But you can, for example, also activate oscillator number two, like so. And let's change the waveform here to, for example, square, okay? Now you can use this dial blend to blend from one to the next audio input. And of course, you have a corresponding modulation source and amount. You have also a drive here, which is really nice. And that uh, is included between the blending and before the volumes and is activated uh, for each individual voices, like the pan as well, which is different from what you uh, the Como actually module works. So this is really, really nice. And uh, you have volume, of course, that you can adjust. And then you have a free corresponding source of modulation and modulation amount. You can set it to uh, perform analog and in terms of uh, its performance. And also, what you can do is you have a pan here dial with corresponding modulation source and amount as well. So let's, uh, it's quite nice, this one actually, key random. So random key, so let's try. If you have a headphones, it will move from the left to the right channel. That will collect to set it to default. But of course, you can add, for example, if you like uh, a, an LFO, for example, or another uh, Envelope. You can see under the envelope there is as a default an ADSR and an attack decay system and release envelope and is set as number one. Up here you have the direct um, output to the to actually to the um, final stereo output. So here you can select, for example, to bypass the uh, blending drive. Okay, and it will go straight to the effect section, which is here, okay? So let me show you how that works. So let's set these to open, okay? Let's add some, uh, um, for example, drive. Let's change this to LFO2. You can hear now there is um, an LFO on drive. And let's activate um, uh, the reverb. Okay, now let's go and uh, remove these two. We set it to open like so. And then we say direct left input will be oscillator one and direct uh, um, right input will be oscillator number two. 
So in this case, it's bypassing the blending drive and is going straight into the effects. Okay, I'm going to stop here. I hope you enjoyed and find useful the tutorial. And in the next one, we're going into all the difference on how to use the three different oscillators. Okay, see you next time. Bye.